Hi guys, how are you doing? This is Miss Peterman. I just wanted to say hello and I wanted to um, say that I missed you and I hope you all are being sweet to your parents. And I'm going to go ahead and do the read aloud for uh, part one of lesson or unit four, your Native Americans. And um, so this is my first time doing this, so you'll just have to bear with me. And if I don't do as good a job as everybody else, oh well. I may, I gave it a shot, right? So uh, here we go. So I wanted to, so what I've been understanding is that you're reading about Native Americans and that more than 3,000 years ago in the river valleys near the Mississippi River, there were groups of Native Americans who began to settle. And these groups were known as the Mound Builders. And um, you've learned about how they survived and how they hunted and gathered and began to farm and they grew beans and squash and corn. And then you've also been learning about why they ended up settling where they did. And as you know, they when people start farming, that's literally they start to, to put down roots. And so they have to stay there to be able to um, harvest the things that they've planted. So they began to settle in one place. And um, so they had semi-permanent or permanent settlements. So I wanted to give you um, some information about the, some of the terms you're going to hear today. So um, today you're going to hear about a group of Native Americans who are known today as the Ancestral Pueblo. And some of you guys may have heard the word Anasazi for this group of people, uh, because that's been a term that's commonly used until recently. Uh, we, it's hard for us to know exactly um, as we're learning because everything keeps changing, but we're learning more and more about the history, language, and the cultures of these people. So it's hard for us to know what they were actually called. But I will tell you that the term Anasazi was given to the ancestral Pueblo people by a nearby group of people called the Navajo. And the, Na the name Anasazi means ancestors of the enemy because the Navajo and the ancestral Pueblo did not get along. So the ancestral Pueblo, Pueblo would not have called themselves the Anasazi. So um, I'll tell you that Europeans also came up with the names uh, tribal names when they first came to North America and encountered people, and they weren't always the nicest names. So what they have done is they've some of them have changed their names, or their um, we now know that the Eskimo, the uh, Eskimos are now called Inuit people, the Iroquois are called who do no Shawnee and the Navajo folks are now called Diné. So you'll be hearing about all of these groups in upcoming read alouds. So right now we've got all these folks that are um, these mound builders who are living in the Mississippi river areas and they're creating their own cultures. So let's go ahead and get started. So in this image that you're seeing for a, you are looking at the Southwest Settlement. So more than 3,000 years ago in the American Southwest, groups of native peoples began to move away from a nomadic existence of hunting and gathering to early forms of farming. In particular, they began to grow crops such as corn and squash. However, in such a dry and arid region, these early people could not survive by farming alone. While the land could provide some additional food, the people in this region continued to hunt and gather with simple tools such as clubs, hunting sticks, and spears. Archaeologists believe that some of these early peoples may have inhabited natural caves, but most lived in pit houses. In addition to experimenting with crops, they began to hunt with bows and arrows. All right, so you can see these pit, house, uh, pit houses here, and you can see they've got their spears and different things that they're using. All right, so approximately 2,000 years later, some groups of native peoples in this region began to develop more sophisticated farming method methods that included the use of irrigation, which is the ability to channel water to crops. Now that is possible, now that it was possible to grow crops more successfully, these native peoples became committed to the areas where their crops grew. As a result, they began to settle in one place. This meant that Southwestern Native, Amer Native culture began to develop and thrive. Some of those groups of people included the Ancestral Pueblo, the Magallon, and the Hohokam. 
the Mogi, Mag, <laughs> excuse me, Mogollon inhabited the mountainous areas of southwestern New Mexico and east central Arizona. They diverted streams so they could water their crops and may even have experimented with ways of storing water. The Hohokam inhabited the desert areas of what is present-day southern Arizona. They built a network of canals that channeled water to their lands. This type of early engineering helped these people overcome the challenges presented by their environment. That's pretty smart. You can see here rather they made channels in the ground to get the water to their crops. That's pretty, pretty smart. All right. This read, read aloud focuses on the ancestral Pueblo who lived in an area of the Southwest that connects present day Colorado, New Mexico, Arizona, and Utah. This area is often referred to as the Four Corners. The ancestral Pueblo lived throughout this region. Many lived in the dry valleys near smaller rivers or waterways. Some, having struggled with the challenges of living in the drier valley areas, moved onto the raised plateaus and mesas. Just like the Magallon and Hohokam, the ancestral Pueblo developed ways to divert water from streams and rivers to irrigate their fields. That's cool. So you can see these plateaus and the mesas. All right. There were many reasons why some of the ancestral Pueblo moved up onto the greener mesas. There were trees growing on these mesas that provide the native people with shelter and wood. Because mesas are raised flatlands or plateaus, they receive more sunlight than the valleys below. And the mesas receive more rain and snow, making them a more ideal environment for growing crops. However, whether they lived on the mesas or in the valleys, they were able to have a larger food supply. As a result, the ancestral Pueblo population increased and their culture developed. Over time, they began to grow a variety of crops, including beans, which are high in protein. They began to raise turkeys and use their feathers to make blankets and feathered robes. They constructed pit houses that were dug into the ground and covered with tree branches, leaves, and dirt. You can see those pit houses again. All right. The ancestral Pueblo moved on to building homes above the ground. Initially, they used wood and adobe, which is a sun-dried brick made from clay, to construct simple homes. Eventually, they became skilled stone workers and learned how to construct extremely solid homes that were several stories high. Some of these homes had as many as 100 connecting rooms. These structures were the earliest forms of high-rise buildings. The flat rooftops of these impressive buildings had a special function in the fall. Crops that had been harvested were laid out on the flat rooftops to dry in the warm sunshine. The ancestral Pueblo began to live in large settlements or villages. It was not unusual for hundreds of people to live in one village. These villages eventually became known as Pueblos, the Spanish word for towns. The ancestral Pueblo continued to construct rooms beneath the ground, but over time these underground rooms, called kivas, changed shape. They became round or keyhole shape. See that in here, these underground rooms? A special few were much larger and used only for important religious ceremonies. The ancestral Pueblo worshipped nature gods. It is thought they believed that humans were first created inside the earth. Eventually, they crawled out onto the surface of the earth. This is called a creation story. Each kiva contained a hole in the ground to signify this belief. The ancestral Pueblo became known for their stonework, their expert basket weaving, and their pottery. Their basket weaving in particular was quite extraordinary. Their baskets were beautifully designed and intricately woven. They were so carefully woven that after they were cut, after they were coated with mud and baked by the sun, they could be used for cooking, carrying water, and storing harvested crops. The ancestral Pueblo used yucca bark and various plant fibers to make baskets, ropes, mats, and sandals. They planted cotton and used it to make lighter, more comfortable clothing. They developed pottery that varied in color, size, and texture. 
The ancestral Pueblo mined turquoise stone and used it in their jewelry. They traded turquoise, pots, and cotton with other native groups. Each family ate meals together. The head man of the home offered food to the gods. He did this by throwing a small amount of food onto the fire that was used to cook the wood. All right, so let's talk about the Pueblo daily life. The ancestral Pueblo were a spiritual people who lived their lives with thoughtful intention and careful plans. The people in each Pueblo were part of a specific clan or tribe. Every clan was given an equal amount of farmland. The ancestral Pueblo were skillful farmers, builders, and craftsmen. It would have been an extraordinary sight to see a busy ancestral Pueblo village to live and walk amidst the stone structures that blended so well with the environment. Moving through town, you might see the ancient craftsmen at work, or observe the religious leaders urging the nature gods to help them. And during the growing seasons, you could watch the conscientious or careful farmers in their fields tending to their crops. Strangely, for reasons we cannot fully explain, the ancestral Pueblo began to abandon their homes. Instead, they began to construct construct homes called cliff dwellings beneath or at the base of cliffs. Do you see those inside that right underneath the cliffs? The cliff dwellings were difficult to get to though. People had to climb up and down using finger and footholds carved into the rock. Nevertheless, the ancestral Pueblo continued to irrigate and tend to their fields and their craftsmanship continued to flourish at least for a while. However, there is another mystery surrounding these ancient peoples. By about 1300 AD, the ancestral Pueblo had left these magnific magnificent homes never to return again. It seems that over a period of time, family groups walked away from their ancestral homes and set out into the arid valleys. They left behind all their tools and supplies used in daily life and went in search of other places to settle. Historians seem sure that they went to other areas of the Southwest, including the Little Colorado River region of Arizona and the Rio Grande River of New Mexico. Scientists and historians also know that there was a great drought between 1276 and 1299. This would have caused crop failure and possible starvation. Wars with other native groups would certainly have added to the struggle to survive. Perhaps too many people... Too many problems arose for the people trying to live in such cramped conditions that they could not overcome them. Although we do not know why the ancestral Pueblo people left their homes, we do know that they raised families, celebrated life, felt the warmth of the sunshine, and left footprints in the snow. They left enough of themselves that we can imagine their lives and archaeologists can put together some of the pieces. We are connected to them by our own presence here on earth and the knowledge that their descendants still thrive in parts of the American Southwest. You will hear more about those descendants in the next read aloud. Well, guys, I want you, I think there's a, a daily quiz or something that goes along with these. So I hope that you do a great job on those. And I hope I did a good enough job for you to be able to answer those questions. And again, I miss you and I hope you all are doing awesome and I hope you're um, doing some reading and doing some of your good work. And I hope to see you soon. Thank you guys. Bye.